Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Hunt. I'm one of the marine scientists here at RS Aqua, and today I'm going to be answering some of your frequently asked questions about the Yuko Micro AUV by Seba. So the Yuko is rated to 300 meters and typically depending on the sensors configured can run for about 8 to 10 hours at 2.5 knots though it can run at 6 knots if required and that's thanks to a Blue Robotics T200 thruster. So the Yuko is built around a single sensor architecture and as standard there are four variants available. There's a CTD featuring a RBR Legato CTD there's a side scan sonar featuring a deep vision 680 kHz side scan sonar. There is a Yuko Physico which features an AML 3RT probe which you can switch and change the parameters for. And there's also a Yuko PAM which features RS Aqua's own porpoise underwater noise recorder. There's also a Yuko carrier variant which is completely empty at the front and you can work with Ciba to integrate whichever sensor you require as long as it meets the payload power and size requirements. Another option for the Yuko is the USBL, which is what this is here. This is currently going through integration trials, more on that later. So other things that are on the Yuko, at the bottom here we have a DVL made by Waterlinked. So this in conjunction with Ciba's proprietary INX navigational algorithm helps achieve a really high navigational accuracy of plus or minus 1% error over a thousand meters. There's also options for a light and or a camera to be fitted to the Yuko and these would sit here behind the DVL but obviously this one hasn't got one. The whole antenna assembly up here houses a few different things. You have the GPS transceiver, which is used for navigation and also for communication with the Seacom handheld device. You also have an LED bar strip here, which is used to show the status of the AUV. And a nice loop here in the antenna assembly, which is useful for carrying and also recovery via a boat hook. Missions for the Yuko are pre-planned using Ciba's C-Plan software. Essentially this allows you to plot a path for the Yuko to follow. This is then uploaded via Wi-Fi to the Yuko for it to then complete. Data files like bathymetry can also be uploaded into the C-Plan software to aid in navigation and mission planning. During the mission there is a small handheld device I mentioned called the Seacom. This has a range of two kilometers via Wi-Fi radio that can connect to the Yuko while it is in the field as long as it is at the surface. Now this can be used to tell the Yuko to abort the mission if there is an issue. It can also be used to track how long the Yuko has been underwater and once the Yuko has finished its mission, if it's been successful, it will alert the Seacom to where it is with regards to a bearing and also distance. There's also an option which is really helpful on the Seacom which allows you to tell the Yuko to come back to my position if you don't want to use the boat to get there. So at the bottom of the antenna assembly here is a subcon connector and this is used to turn on the Yuko via a start key but also it's used for external battery recharge which takes a few hours. Data is transferred via Wi-Fi and download and saving is facilitated using the C-Plan software. As well as all the sensor data, all of the mission parameters such as internal pressure, depth, AHRS, GPS positioning and battery status will all be saved within C-Plan software and then saved onto the computer. So that wraps it up for FAQs on the Yuko. If you've got any more questions, please get in touch or visit our website.